This is the day that the Lord hath made. And I will rejoice and I'll be glad in it on a Saturday afternoon. Who else can I give the glory and the praise to for waking me up this morning and starting me on my way? Nobody but God himself. And so if you're listening to me, that means God awakened you this morning. And here we are today at our New Harvest Inspirational Meal Time, where we share in the goodness of the Lord, where we feast upon his wonderful word, and where we participate in what God is doing in the now. I'm Bishop Marcus A. Johnson, Sr. I am the founder and senior pastor of New Harvest Ministry, and I'm just so glad to be with you today. And a special shout out to Pastor Leon Pinkett and Deaconess Marika Pinkett, to uh, Mother, to Sister Elizabeth Morris and her team, Deaconess Fran Jackson, Deaconess Marika. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my, my thoughts here. To uh, all of those that are working together at the church as they're doing live vaccinations right now. We have teamed with Johns Hopkins Hospital. And as I left out the church, uh, our own deacon is Carol Turner and deacon uh, George Connors and Katrina Garrett and, 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 and Sister Gladney. Oh, there was a host of them. Phil O'Carroll, they were there and they were helping in the process. Leon Pinkett, the fourth, they were all down there as they were coming in off the street and they were being vaccinated. And we're just excited. We're just so happy to be able to provide an opportunity for the community. Remember now that if you are vaccinated, then you no longer become a likable, likely host of the of the virus that's right the virus needs a host and that's how it can mutate that's how the virus can stay alive but as many people as are vaccinated then we minimize the ability of being a host and we help to stamp out this COVID-19 and I don't know about you but I want to see this COVID-19 gone I want to see it gone. I want to see the Delta variant gone and all the variants. Amen. So we thank God for all of his goodness. And if I omitted mentioning anyone's name that's down at the church, it was not intentional. Patrice was down there. That's right. Patrice was down there. We just thank God for the privilege and opportunity. Let's ask God's blessing now upon this meal. And then we're going to get into our question for today. Father God, we thank you. We bless you that you've been so good to us. God, we thank you that even in the midst of all kind of inopportune things, you always make a way. Lord, we know for sure that weapons will be formed against us, but your word declare it will not prosper. Thank you for protecting your people and keeping your people safe. Now, God, bless us as we share in this question and answer as you minister unto us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Once you know that we love each and every one of you, you're special to us. And look who's on board, Pastor Jacob Bonnie, all the way from Tanzania. And we're just glad to have you with us as so many of you are coming on board Amen. And I hope those that are down at the church, maybe a deaconess Gwen, you can text Sister Fran and text them down at the church and tell them to listen on their phones so they don't miss out on what God is doing for us today. Amen. Phil O'Carroll is on there. So you tell them to listen up for what God has. So we have a question and a half. I'm going to tell you, boy, we got a question today. Here it is. Good morning, Bishop. I have a comment and a question. Uh-oh, hold on to your seat. Here we go. My comment, based on my experience, is that sometimes Bible teaching is easier to accept than it is to apply. Whoa. Sometimes Bible teaching is easier to accept than it is to apply. My question is regarding returning to work. 
I have worked from home for more than a year. This gave me a reprieve from coworkers that drive me nuts. Did I say they drive me nuts? They drive me nuts, Bishop. Okay, sounds like somebody's being very transparent. I am not confident that I can practice the biblical principles that I have learned this past year when I return to the office. Signed from, do I have to go back? <laughs> I just love the transparency and the honesty. Do I have to go back? That's who wrote this question. Do I have to go back? And the premise of that question is that I've acquired knowledge. I've learned some things while I have been home for a year. Now, if I go back to work, I don't think I can apply what I've learned because those co-workers drive me nuts. And maybe some of you have that same sentiment. Or maybe you're dealing with some other things in, as it relates to going back. Some other challenges that you will have to deal with if you go back. So let's, let's tackle this. I'm entitling the lesson today, Go Back only to get ahead. Go back only to get ahead. All right. And I'm going to direct you to Philippians. Philippians. Good afternoon, Fran. I see you here. You're here. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, Reaching forth into those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What is Paul saying to us? Paul is saying, forgetting those things that are behind in the sense of not being now stuck in those things to which God has brought me beyond, not being stuck. But yet there is a place and there is a significance for those things. But he says, I have to go ahead. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. To this anonymous writer, do I have to go back? If the word of God that you have learned only works, if you don't go back, then perhaps it's not all that we say that the word of God is. If the word of God can't keep us in unpopular places and in, 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 in difficult places and challenging places, last week we talked about the hard thing. If the word of God can't sustain us in the hard thing, then the word of God is not what it says that it is. But we know that the word of God is Jesus Christ himself. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Oh, I'm so glad Pastor Leon Pinkett says, you're listening from New Harvest Ministry, Johns Hopkins Medicine Vaccination Clinic. Oh, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. So as many as can tune in as we go forth, and we are now hearing directly from God. So go back only to get ahead. So Yes, you need to go back to work, but go back only to get ahead. Our omniscient God, which means God knows everything about everything, who foreknows all things, allowed the pandemic to be an opportunity for our natural and spiritual growth and development. Now, God did not send the pandemic, but he allowed it. He could have stopped it. He allowed it. And this becomes the backdrop for our natural and spiritual growth, getting our vaccinations, that's natural. That's a natural thing there. But that we could do some things differently. We could work smarter and not harder. And then just like we're doing this live stream right now, we weren't doing this before the pandemic. No, because we gathered together in the live setting. That's how we got the word of God. So the Lord allowed us to discover that even in the pandemic, that there was another way we could do what he requires of us. That's right. And so now we've been on for well over a year, 15 months. 
We've been coming on every day, every day. That's more than we were doing when we were coming together in the church. Because with, before the pandemic, we met on Sundays. We met on Wednesday night and perhaps another day if there was something special. But since this pandemic, we have been meeting every day, Monday through Saturday at one o'clock. And then twice on Sundays for Biblical Academy on Zoom and then for our Sunday service at 11 o'clock. And then the women for prayer, they meet by way of Zoom or at seven o'clock on Tuesday mornings. They still do that. And the men, they meet on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. for prayer and Bible discussion. We weren't doing that for the pandemic, but God allowed it. God allowed it. So the question comes when we are able to get back into the sanctuary, which we're going to be doing soon. Do we stop doing this live stream? Do we stop using these media platforms? Of course not. We've got to go back by only going ahead, by going forward. And God has allowed this. And God never intended for us to acquire all of this Bible knowledge and information and not to apply it. James 1 verses 22 to 25 puts it like this. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, that's what we've been doing. That's what we've been doing, studying the word of God and, and, and learning the, the lessons that are contained in the word of God and continue with their end after we've studied and then we continue in what we've learned. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So do we go back? Yes, but we go back only to go ahead, to be a doer of what we have heard, what we have learned. So let's consider a Bible giant that was confronted with going back. We always find our example in the scripture. Let's look at Joseph. Let's look at Joseph. Joseph, who was confronted with going back to his painful past by confronting his brethren who threw him in a pit and sold him into slavery and untruthfully told their father Jacob that he was dead. And so Joseph was confronted with going back to what he had put behind him when he met his brethren. And so did he have to go back? Yes, he had to go back, but he went back by only going ahead. Let's look at this. Joseph, now the second in command in all of Egypt, most successful and removed from his painful past, now meets his brethren. He meets his siblings, his brothers his brothers that were jealous of him, his brothers that hated him. But what has he learned since he last saw them? What have we learned since we were last on our physical jobs, since we were last in the open forum, in the public? What have we learned since the pandemic has begun? All right, let's look at some things that Joseph has learned. In the pit, because his brothers threw him in the pit. In the pit, he learned that when you are alone in an empty place, God will bring you out. Ah, that's what he learned. He learned that in the pit, that when you're alone in an empty place, God will bring you out. Do I have any witnesses out there that can say God has brought me out? Come on, somebody. Somebody that had COVID-19. Someone that had to take care of a loved one with COVID-19. Somebody that had to figure out the finances and trust God to make a way out of no way. Had to, had to teach children at home. The children had to learn on Zoom. They were in a physical school. Now, all of a sudden, they're home. We had to learn. But God, while we were in the pit, come on, God brought me out. He brought me out. 
of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today. It's a song of praises. Hallelujah. I see you, Sabina. Sabina said, I'm a witness. That's right, Michelle. He brought me out. We would have thought that if we had known we'd be in the pandemic this long, we'd have thought we've lost our houses. We'd have thought we would have lost our jobs. We would have thought our relationships would have crashed. Some of us would have thought we'd be dead. A whole lot of things. My God, in the pandemic, some of you have gotten promotions on your job. Some of you have bought houses. Some of you, oh my God, have found relationships. That's right, Pastor Bonnie. He brought me out. And if I had never fallen into the pandemic pit, I would not have known that God is greater than the pit. And God brought me out. I see you, Deaconess Maria. He brought me out. That's right. Genesis 37, 23 through 27. And it puts it like this. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into the pit. And the pit was empty. And some of us, when the pandemic first came, we felt like we were in an empty place and there was no water in it. So it was not just empty, it was dry. We were in a drought, that's right. And they sat down to eat bread, his brethren, and they lift up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spices and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah, Joseph's brother, said unto his brethren, what profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? So he concocted and thought, come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh and his brethren were content. Do you see what happened? It doesn't matter how God orchestrates it. Doesn't matter who God uses or what their motive was. Guess what? Through his brother Judah, he convinced his brethren that threw Joseph in the pit, let's get him out. So again, in the pit, he learned that when you're alone and in an empty place, God will bring you out. And then there's another thing that he learned. In Potiphar's house, that's where he went to work, Joseph learned that even when falsely accused, God will bring you favor. That's right. When you're falsely accused, God will bring you favor. Genesis 39 verses 20 through 21. And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison and placed up where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. So he went from the pit to Potiphar's house. Now he's in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. <laughs> God was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So what did he learn? In Potiphar's house, Joseph learned that even when falsely accused, God will bring favor. He will bring favor. What else did he learn? He also learned that in jail, Joseph learned that even when forgotten, even when forgotten in due season, we will be remembered. In due season, we will be remembered. What does that mean? Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, God, God, in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. And so Joseph, who had been forgotten, was now remember. Do we have to go back? Yeah, we got to go back. Why? Because we've been remembered. And if God has remembered us, then there's a work that we can do. Genesis 41, chapter 41, verses 9 through 14. Look at this. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Because remember, Joseph had helped him and he forgot about Joseph. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me, this is now uh, the butler talking, put me inward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night. 
I and he, and we dream each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man. Look at this. An Hebrew servant to the captain of a guard. And we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream. He did interpret. Whose dream are you interpreting? Who are you blessing? Who are you helping? Oh my goodness, we got somebody that's live chatting. Hello, sir. I am from India. God bless you. I want you to know that God loves everybody. He doesn't care what continent you're on, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God bless you and welcome on board to our New Harvest Midday Inspiration Meal Time. And so now let's go back. Verse 13 of Genesis 41. And it came to pass as he, Joseph, interpreted to us, so it was. Me, he restored unto mine office, and him, talking about now the baker, he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. What happened? He was remembered. He was remembered. Oh, bless God. I need to tell you right now, you have to go back because you got to remember somebody. You got to go back so somebody can remember you. You got to go back so you can interpret for somebody what they're going through. Somebody's having an experience. Somebody's going through a difficult time and they need somebody to interpret where they are and help them to understand where they are to go. Oh, praise God. Here's something else that Joseph learned. Right before Pharaoh, right before Pharaoh, Joseph learned that God allowed demotions lead to greater promotions. Did you hear what I just said? Before Pharaoh, Joseph learned that God allowed, that means whatever God allows, that the God allowed demotions lead to greater promotions. Look at Genesis 41, verses 15 through 16. And then we'll look at 37 and 40. Now, let me just turn in my Bible because I didn't print it out like I meant to. But Genesis chapter 41. And we're seeing that God is using Joseph's experience to teach him something. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed the dream and there is none that can interpret. So now Pharaoh is telling Joseph, I got a problem. He says, and I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. So I heard that there's some people that know how to pray. I've heard there's some people that know how to get in touch with God. I heard there's some people that know some word from God. And I, I have not been able to find anybody that can help me along my way. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. I'm not the one. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. So Joseph was clear that Pharaoh did not mistake that Joseph was the answer. No, God is the answer, but I'm just the vehicle. And then verse 37, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all of his servants. What Joseph told him, the interpretation, verse 38 of Genesis 41, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God have showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house. Now, he went from a demotion to a promotion. Thou shalt be over my house. According unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. So he went from a demotion. It was a God allowed demotion that led to a greater promotion. Joseph learned vital lessons. Yes, he did. He learned that in the pit, that when you're alone and in an empty place, God will bring you out. He learned that in Potiphar's house, 
that even when falsely accused, God will bring you favor. He learned that in jail, that even when forgotten in due season, we will be remembered. And then Joseph learned that God allowed demotions lead to greater promotion. So when Joseph confronted his hard thing, when Joseph had to go back to work, when Joseph had to deal with the ones who had dealt so unfavorably with him. I see you, Pastor Yvette Tiller. God bless your church without walls, Christian ministry. Glad that we're all together in this platform. So when Joseph had to deal with this hard thing, did he go back? Did he go back? Well, let's read Genesis 50 verses 20 through 21. And here is our answer. Joseph brothers, when their father died, they thought Joseph was going to treat them based upon what they deserve. But I want you to know that God gives mercy to spare us what we deserve so he can give us grace. That's his favor, what we don't deserve. Did you hear that? Mercy allows God to spare us what we deserve so grace can give us what we don't deserve. And so Genesis 50 verses 20 to 21, this is what Joseph said to his brothers. You think I'm not going to have vengeance on you because our father died. Oh my God. Oh my God. Listen, the purpose, the purpose of all of this is now answered in this verse. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. God allowed Joseph's brothers to throw him in the pit so that they would sell him down to the Ishmaelites, that he would get the part of his house, that he would end up in jail, that he would interpret the baker and the butler's dream, that they would remember that the butler would tell Pharaoh that Joseph would then interpret the Pharaoh's dream, that Pharaoh would promote Joseph, and that Joseph now would be able to tell Pharaoh how to manage in a famine so that not only Egypt would live, but that Jacob's, Joseph's father, Jacob, could come into Egypt, he and his family, and they could eat during a famine. God's whole plan for all that Joseph went through was so that the people of Egypt and that his own people and others could live through a famine. God has allowed you to go through some hard times so somebody else can live, so somebody else can survive a famine, that somebody else can survive a dry place, so that somebody else can look to the hills from which cometh their help, my help coming from the Lord, that somebody could hear your testimony, that somebody could see your witness, see your life, see your example. Do you have to go back? Yes, you got to go back because you got to tell somebody this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. God needs us on the hill. He needs us in the valley. God needs us in the alleys. God needs us on the street. He doesn't just want us in our confined spaces just so that we can be comfortable, just so that we can have the accoutrements that make our lives pleasant. No, God is saying, who can, will go for me? Who can I send? And God is looking for someone to say, here am I, Lord, send me. I'll go. I'll tell the story. I'll be a witness. I'll be a testimony. I will point the way and I'll do like Joseph. And when he told Pharaoh, I'm not the one that can give you the answer. It comes from God. And so however God uses us, make sure we give God the glory. Make sure we give God the praise. Make sure that we said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. Where? In the land of the living. Where? In the sanctuary, getting my vaccination. Where? Among the people of God. Where? Among prayer warriors. Where? Among those that once was down, but now God has raised them up. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you have to go back? Yes, go back only to go ahead. Oh, yes, 
Though Joseph went back by confronting his victimizers, his own brethren, and it's hard when people you love, when people close to you, when people you depend upon, when they turn their back on you, when they let you down. But I need you to understand, they're just instruments of the enemy. Our enemy is not our brethren. It's not our sisters. It's not those of another race. It's not those that from another country. Our enemy is Satan, and he'll use whoever will be weak enough to follow after him. But Joseph went back, and he confronted his brothers. He could have had them killed, but he was more matured now. He had learned to help to move forward, and so he went back so he could lead his brothers forward, so that his brothers did not have to live in fear. And so his brothers could experience the favor of God. What good is it if we mistreat our enemies? That's an opportunity to show them the love of God. So I close with this. Do I have to go back? Yes, go back to only get ahead. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Oh, glory to God, forgetting those things which are behind. What does that mean? Forgetting when I was stuck, forgetting how painful it was when I was in the pit, forgetting how horrible it felt when I was falsely accused, forgetting when the baker and the butler forgot about me, forgetting all of the unfair things that happened to me, but learning the lesson that in spite of it all, the Lord came through because no weapon formed against me will prosper. There will be weapons formed, but they won't accomplish what Satan sent them to accomplish. And so I've got to go back, reaching forth into those things which are before, and I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Please, whatever you do, only go back to go ahead. And we're getting ready to go back into our sanctuary. Yes, we are. We're going back and we are tentatively planning to go back on the 4th of July. What a time to go back in the sanctuary on the Independence Day, on a day that we declare absolute freedom. I'm telling you this on the weekend of June 10th, that God has already emancipated us. God has already set us free. God has already opened up closed doors. He's made a way out of no way. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation and all things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Will we still be live streaming? Yes. Will we still be doing midday? Yes. Will the women still be praying on Tuesday morning? Yes. Will we still be having Bible class live stream on Wednesday? Yes. Will the men still be praying on Thursday night? Yes. And whatever else God has planned, will we still be giving away vaccinations out of the sanctuary? Yes. I will not stop. I'll go back. So I can go ahead and you go ahead and watch God do what eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered to the hearts of men, the thing that God has in store for those of us that will go back only to go ahead. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. You know what you're doing. You already know the end from the beginning. And you just need a people that will be obedient and that will say yes to you. Bless Johns Hopkins. Bless the outreach team. Bless the volunteers of New Harvest. Just bless your people everywhere. God, bless the visitor from India. Bless all of those that are listening in wherever they are and cause hearts to know that God has thought good thoughts of us and that God will bring us to an expected end. We give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now I'll see you tomorrow at 930 
for our biblical academy for the adults and the youth at 11 o'clock. We got a special men's day service, a special father's day service, rather a special father's day service for tomorrow. Invite as many as you can to listen in to what God has for us. Pastor Bonnie, God bless you. Happy father's day to you and all of those in our church in Tanzania, Africa. God bless those at without walls and God bless those beyond the walls of Pastor Lamont. God bless our ministry in, in Iowa. God bless the ministry that it's that's in uh, outside of Washington D.C. God bless all of you. Heaven smile upon you. I'll see you tomorrow. Be blessed, Lord. I didn't got all worked up on a Saturday. If you enjoyed today, click that like button. Click it and understand that oh God spoke to me, and I'm blessed by His word and by His goodness. And we'll see you on tomorrow. Have a great day. Be blessed. Ah, oh, thank you. Wow.